Who's impressing at the Maple Leafs development camp? SI's Nick Barton will join us today to break down the past few days and give us thoughts on the Leafs offseason so far. All that more coming up on the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Uh, Dave, we've got a special guest on the show today, Nick Barden, Leafs prospect reporter for uh, Sports Illustrated and the Hockey News, going to join us. Leafs development camp been underway the last few days, and he's been there live in person, grinding away, uh, so he can give us some updates on what's going on there, then we'll get into what he thinks about what's gone down, uh, what's gone down in the last month since Brad Trilliving took over as Leafs general manager. Get his thoughts on the draft, on free agency. It's going to be a, a, a fun time, uh, Dave. I'm, I'm excited to to get him on. But quickly, an update, an update from yesterday's podcast. Notice anything different? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There, well, you can- I told you. I told you it was gonna there was gonna be no issue with that. There's some people, Dave, who just who listen to the podcast via audio. So you gotta tell them what's different here. You gotta, you gotta speak. Oh, you gotta yeah. say so Mike, word. Mike actually has a fade. So he's showing <laughs> off. I have a fade. It's just it's a little bit more of a your your fade is like fades to hair, mine fades to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there I, was the one dude. The I, one dude, man. It was uh was it on Twitter, I think, who yeah. said that apparently by me talking about my haircut was uh was a flex a, a low-key flex because dave doesn't have any hair so that was that was me apparently it was a humble brag he said talking about my haircut uh i appreciate you, those who uh those who have my back on that one that I, was funny I was... I, it gave me a chuckle it did give me a chuckle um but yes so uh, what ended up happening was i did go back to the place after they uh for those who didn't see yesterday's podcast got a haircut yesterday I didn't quite like the length of it. I thought that it wasn't really short enough. There was no real fade on it. And uh, I, I contemplated whether or not I was going to go back and try and see if they would touch up the sides for me a little bit. And ultimately, I said, all right, I'm just going to go try. Worst I can say is no. And uh, they did it actually for me and free of charge. It was, you know, kind of them. They weren't busy. So it wasn't like I took, uh, you know, a, a chair from, from a paying customer or anything like that. So, but uh, yeah, they went and they 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 gave me you know the the cut that I wanted to my pleasing. So appreciate it. Shout out. Uh, I can't remember even what the place was called now. Oh man, oh. Uh, it was it was on Queen Street. It was on Queen Street. You know, yeah. We'll have to get them on as an advertiser so then we can shout them out. Yeah, that's right. No free ads. No free ads. Uh, but anyways, so that's uh, that's the update there. I got the haircut that I wanted. And uh, I'm excited for my my trip that I'll be going on starting tomorrow. Uh, so I'm excited for that. And and now we've got the hair, the hair that'll be that'll be in good shape uh, moving forward. Uh, speaking of moving forward, let's move forward with this podcast and let's get to our guy Nick Barden, uh, Leafs prospect reporter in Sports Illustrated's uh, The Hockey News. Let's welcome him into the show. All right, and as promised, we'll bring in Nick Barden into the show, least prospect reporter for Sports Illustrated's The Hockey News. What's going on, Nick? How are you, man? I am. I'm good, but I'm tired. It's been <laughs> a long, a long three days. Even though there was a day off um, on what's today? Is today Thursday? Yeah, Wednesday. There was a day off, but the first two days were a little bit long. It was like from ten forty-five to three. So. Full shift, putting in yeah. full shifts there, watching these guys play hockey. I saw that too. Like, and then afterwards, they're going out doing like some bumper cars or, or uh, go karts and, and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. I saw somebody, I guess, got into a bit of an accident uh, earlier today. They're posting somewhere on social media. But uh, hey, man, you've been grinding away, doing doing God's work, just watching these young cats 
you know, perform and, and try and uh, put on a show, I guess, you know, like this, like to you, what, what does development camp mean? Do you think to, to these players, like you've had a chance to speak to a lot of them, like what are they trying to achieve in, in this next week? Uh, a lot of the guys to me, uh, Haley Wickenheiser said, this is sort of like a camp where you steal things from other guys and, you know, like maybe it's a skill that another player has or a technique, the way they shoot the puck. That's one thing that I think a lot of players are doing, but I was thinking about it today. You know, imagine you or me or someone just being on the ice, being a player. And I'm like, I just thought like you have Brad, you living there sometimes watching you. Sheldon Keefe was there today on um, Thursday watching you. It, it's, it's a lot like, and especially in the Leafs organization, like you talk to some of the guys who've been drafted and they just say like how, like how historic this franchise is and uh, you know, how, how much of an honor it is to be wearing the Maple Leaf. So I, I think, I think a lot of these guys take it as, uh, as, as serious as they can. Um, but it's also too, like, it's also about having fun, trying to learn, and it, it's a lot in a week. Like you, you're trying to take away so many things and, you know, there's, again, there's so many guys, so many people you can talk to. And uh, I, I remember last year, like there were a few Leafs that were even there. I think Fraser Minton said last year that like he was eaten and John Tavares just came up to him and started talking mm -hmm. to him. So, I mean, it's a, it's I'm sure it's a lot, but it, it seems like all the guys there are having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I'm curious if there's anyone because it's been three days so far of of uh, some sessions uh, so far throughout the development camp. Is there you know a group of players that have stood out to you? I, I think the obvious choices. It's it's been a little bit difficult because the first two days, although they were long. Um, a lot of it was like skating drills and uh, drills that were not contact based. So it was, it was really hard to tell anything from those two days from t today. Um, it, it seems like, you know, the people who you'd think would stand out would stand out. Um, I remember last season it, it was so much, you know, it felt like it was so bigger, so much bigger because Matthew Nyes was there. And right. now that he's not there this year, there's, you know, a guy like Fraser Minton, um, Roni Hervonen, uh, Nick Moldenhauer, uh, Ty Voigt, uh, Ryan Torberg, a lot of these guys who, you know, have played professional hockey, whether it be here, whether it be in Finland or wherever, those are the guys that are really looking like uh, they're taking a step. Um, like for example, Nick Moldenhauer is going to Michigan next year. He's shown that, you know, maybe a year in Michigan might be it for him. You never know. He looks really good. Uh, Fraser Minton, obviously he looks good. The, it, again, it's, it's all the usual people, all the usual, the usual suspects. I feel like, oh, Easton Cowan, that's who I'm forgetting. He, he looks impressive too. Although I, I think you. I, yeah. <laughs> Because if he had a bad camp, like I feel like Leafs Nation would have been real. I mean, they were already up in arms about this selection, even though most of them probably never seen him play a single shift. Just of you know what they're reading or what other people are saying, or they just looked at the the mock drafts and didn't see him anywhere near the first round, and just came to a conclusion that he stinks. And if he would have actually had a poor start to camp, I'm sure the noise would have got louder. So it's good to hear that. He is uh, looking pretty good early on. Yeah, and I, I think it, it's interesting because I remember watching when they drafted him. He, he didn't look really that big. He he still looked like a, sort of like a child. I, I don't know. I'm 25. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older that I think that. But he looked really young. But on the ice, he looks like a very – he looks very filled out. He looks like a big guy. Uh he, he seems like he has tools there. I guess it's just about building and doing whatever the Maple Leafs want him to do to become successful because obviously they see something in him. They're picking him 28th overall when, you know, he wasn't tabbed to go until maybe, I don't remember even 
Six, like 60th, 60th or more? Yeah. yeah. Depending on who's listed. I think Craig Button had him the highest, and he was like 34th, but then not another like reputable ranking had him in the top 50. So, yeah. So, I, 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 he's again, he's, he's an interesting player. Like uh, I remember when we talked to him a few days ago, he said that Nazem Kadri sent him a message uh, when he got drafted. So, and he also said that he's one of the players that he's tried to model his game around. So, so it, 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 it could be an interesting pick. I mean, like you think about Toronto, not really Toronto boy, London boy, but his favorite team was the Maple Leafs growing up. And a guy like Nazem Kadri, who we all know was someone who wore his heart on his sleeve. So, you know, it may, this, this could turn out to be a good pick, but we're going to have to wait and see with that one. What's something you're looking at when you're looking at a player like him? What are the areas you're looking at in his game? I, I think, you know, I, I, a big thing for me is just like, if there is size or muscle, because I've since, I've been covering the AHL for the last few seasons. I watch some of the younger guys who come in and they're not really filled out and they really struggle. And, you know, it's, it's one of the things that when they get to that level is they need that strength, they need that muscle, or they're just going to get beat off the puck easily. So that's one of the things I look at. I, I the shot is obviously another one they're skating. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the skating part and, you know, who's a good skater, who's a really good skater. There's it's, it's at some points really difficult to tell with that. Uh, but yeah, I I'd say, I think again, size is the biggest thing. Are they building muscle? Are they like muscular? Like there's some guys that the Marley's had and you just look at them and you're like, Holy crap, this guy is a big dude. Uh, so I, I think, I think when it comes to a player like Easton Cowan, it would, it, it would be the muscle and, you know, how much weight can he build on as he gets older? And, you know, that'll tell of whether or not he'll be able to play at the NHL level. We're chatting with Nick Barden of the Hockey News, who's been at Leafs Development Camp over the course of the last few days here. Um, really quickly, before you kind of move on to get your thoughts on the rest of the offseason and what Brad Trilliving has been able to do, um, kind of put a final you know stamp on the whole prospect scene with the Maple Leafs. Uh, any any of the new prospects making their way over to North America or, you know, young guys coming from the NCAA who kind of you're, you're expecting to, uh, you know, anyone that's catching your eye that you're looking forward to seeing with the Marlies next year? I think the, the two big ones and the two obvious ones, Hervonen and Topi Niamela. Uh, Niamela had a really good time with the Marlies in his short stint, I think he played what 11 games or I might be wrong there, but he played in the playoffs in a bottom or in a top four role with the Marlies played alongside Jordy Ben for most of the playoffs. He was pretty much instantly put as the Marlies top power play quarterback. He's one guy that I, I think if he can figure everything out and he can, he he's even a guy that really wants to get stronger because he he seemed like he had a lot of bite to him when he was with the Marlies, but there's also at times he got beat off the puck. So I'd say him, Hervonen, I, I'm really interested to see how uh, he really plays at the pro level. Uh, there's also Braden Kressler, who the Leafs signed a few years ago. Maybe it was last year. I have a horrible memory. Um, he's interesting. Uh, Ryan Torberg, who got into a couple of games, he's an interesting one. I uh, feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Braden Kessler. Is, is, is Hill to be coming overseas? Or is yeah. Because I know he did at the end of the year, but is he staying here? Yeah, so that's going to be an interesting situation because uh, they've got Hill to be, they've got Petrozelli, uh, Luke Cavlin, I believe, is still signed to an AHL deal. I'm not sure if Dryden McKay is. And then the two Russian goalies. Um, Arthur Aktiamov and uh, Slava Peksa. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure about those two guys. I, I've talked to some people and I've thought they're going back to Russia, but there hasn't really been any news on them whether or not they'll play in Russia or whether or not they'll play here. So, uh, yeah, the goalie situation, the goalie situation is always interesting with the Marlies. It, it, 
it never gets old. And this season, it's going to be packed as well. Well, there'll be no Joe Wall to lean on anymore. He's oh. got a, a, a one-way ticket, I think, with the Maple Leafs. I mean, he, he requires waivers, and I don't think he's going to slip through. No, I, no. I, I think those days are long gone for Joe Wall, the performance that he had uh, a year ago. Let's take a quick break uh, and hear from our show sponsor. We return. Let's hear from Nick and get his thoughts on what's gone on over the course of the last month since Brad Trilliving took over as the Leafs general manager. So we'll get to all that and more on the other side. But first, let me tell you guys about one of today's show sponsors. It's our good friends over at FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 that you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under, who you think is going to hit the first home run of the game. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB or the NHL, for that matter, than on FanDuel. It's North America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with my co-host Dave Morissuti. We're joined by our guest Nick Barden of the Hockey News, uh, Leafs prospect, writer, and reporter. And I do want to get your thoughts, Nick, on on how you think that uh, Brad Trilliving has done since he's taken over. There's been quite a bit of turnover, to be honest with you. More so, I guess, in the bottom uh, bottom half of the roster than than the top half of the roster, obviously, but just Overall, what you've seen uh, from Trilliving, the moves, the signings in free agency, the non-signings, I suppose, the non-trades that have happened. Just what's your overall assessment of of how, you know, he's done over the course of this last month since taking the job? I'll be honest with you. I when I when it first came down, when July first came, and you know, Ryan Reeves was one of the only guys signed. I was really I was like, what are we doing here? I, I, I honestly, I was thinking like, like what's happening? Like who, who are the Leafs getting? What are, what is the plan? It didn't seem like there was a plan. And then, yeah, Dave and I, Dave and I had this conversation, how it kind of felt like the Brian Burke era when it was just like signing just a big, tough, burly guy, someone who's got, uh, what are those, what was the five words that they used to, that Berkey used to spew out there like that. That's what it seemed like, like that. That's just kind of what they were going after. And then day two came along and eh, put a few more smile across Leafs nation. Yeah. Uh, I, re- I actually was in the room when they did, uh, when tree living uh, did his first interview after uh, they signed Bertuzzi and uh, Domi and he used the word snot. He also used piss and vinegar. So uh, I, I guess those are the three words that, you know, when it comes to all the signings they made, I guess that's what you're looking at with this team now is they're going to play with a little bit of snot. Uh, it, again, it, it was interesting. Like, I was surprised that they went with a guy like Ryan Reeves. I, I think it's a, it, it can be a smart move. It's obviously a big bet at the end of the day. I, I do like what you know, what he brings off the ice after he spoke and uh, really talked about what he can do and how he'll help the team off the ice and how it could be a quiet room. I'm not really too sure if it's a quiet room. I've never been in the room. Um, but, but yeah, that one's, that one's interesting. It's like, it's like that's yet to be seen type of thing. I, 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 I'm struggling with Klingberg. I, I think it's a good move. But I also think it's not, it doesn't really make sense. Like it's, it, it can work out, but when you have a guy like Morgan Riley already there, he like Klingberg is not going to play top power play unless I'm wrong, but there's, there's that. And unless he can come back to how he played a few seasons ago, like you're getting a good defenseman at the end of the day. That's, that's a thing, but it's again the same as Ryan Reeves. It's a bet. It's a big bet, I think. Uh, but after day two, when they signed Domi, when they signed Bertuzzi, 
you start to get a little bit of a look to how the team is and you see that maybe Ryan Reeves doesn't play every night. Maybe, uh, maybe there's other guys who fill in. I don't know. Uh, it, it, the one thing I find interesting is like the regular season at this point for the team doesn't matter. Like yeah. it, it, it might matter to players, but to me, like the playoffs are really the only point. Like you might love to have a great regular season team, but the playoffs are where it matters. And does Ryan Reeves fit into a playoff lineup for you guys? Well, he didn't fit into the playoff lineup in New York. He didn't really fit into the playoff lineup in Minnesota. He, like, you know what I mean? Like they obviously moved on from him for a reason. Um, I'm, I'm not sure either. Like, I think that's yeah. going to be a very much a, a wait and see what happens type of uh, type of approach. And, and, but for a guy who they paid 1.3 million for three years, like they gave him term too, you'd have to think that they, they do view him as at least uh, a usable piece on the fourth line on any given night. No, just based on what they paid to bring him in, considering they're a, te- a team that's in a cap crunch, it's a lot of money to pay for someone who you're only going to play you know, 60% of the games. That's, that's, well, that's the big one there, right? You know, you can't 1.3 million. That's so for some teams, they can find a way to bear that. But on a Leafs team, you just don't have the luxury to say, we'll just put 1.3 million in the press box for a majority of the time, especially in the big games. And if it comes in the playoffs where the Leafs are getting intimidated a little bit physically, and then people are going to be like, well, why isn't Ryan reason here? This is what you're paying him be to do right so i i think you know it could be one of those situations where it's going to be have to be a wait and see approach right see how he does during the regular season and if they go into the playoffs with an opponent who you feel like you're going to need that physical element against let's say like it's like a boston i would expect ryan reeves to probably be in the lineup yeah. if you're going to be going up against like a team like boston yeah very matchup dependent like boston tampa probably in the lineup they got you know a wild card team or or you know New Jersey, Carolina maybe not in the lineup. Yeah, so I uh, I think again that one's an interesting one. Like I, I I saw a tweet thread the other day and it was talking about you know how the Leafs have moved on from guys. Yeah, was, was it a tweet or was it a thread? I mean you can't confuse oh. me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> was it a tweet or was it a thread? Which one? <laughs> It can no longer uh, be both. Well, I guess it can be actually. They're pretty much mm-hmm. both. Everyone just tweets and threads the exact same thing at this point. But yeah, uh, but I don't. I don't remember who it was. But it was like they were saying like they had Wayne Simmons. That didn't really work. Uh, I think they the person forgot that Kyle Clifford is still under contract with this team, and I think a lot of people that. forget that. Mm-hmm. So. So, like, I, I find it interesting. Like, who would you go with, Ryan Reeves or Kyle Clifford? Like, Clifford's been in the mar with the Marlies for pretty much almost. Though he was pretty much almost there the whole season last year. So, I have a theory. Let me know if you think this is correct. I have a theory that if the Maple Leafs would have known that they were going to be able to lock up both Domi and Bertuzzi, they might not have went after ryan reeves so aggressively like it almost seems like that signing is now a little redundant after they added guys like domi and bertuzzi who which they probably didn't think they were going to be able to get just based on the market that they figured those two players would have had and all of a sudden they thought okay we got to get someone let's go heavy after ryan reeves and then lo and behold day two rolls around they're like oh we have the best offer out there for those guys they actually want to come here sweet i feel like you know, if if they're allowed to maybe do a duo, maybe they don't bring in Ryan Reeves for a lot of the reasons that we're talking about, where now you just don't see a, a spot in the lineup as an everyday contributor anymore with, you know, adding those guys to the wing and kind of lengthening that lineup. Yeah, like you look at now the left wing and it's left wing's pretty jammed up, as is the right wing at this point. Like both, yeah. It's pretty it's, solidly like, deep team yeah you like you have you have i i'm not sure domi it, it seems like i i can't remember but i'm pretty sure tree living said they want to try him on the wing, wing. Yeah. yeah so then you've got bertuzzi you've got matthew nyes maybe it's bobby mcmahon who knows pontus holmberg 
Uh, he yeah, Nick center. Robertson. That is another one. So like, oh, I've, there's like five or six people that you got lining up. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's an interesting one. I Again, I do want to say that I understand the off ice portion of it. Like that's, I, I think that's going to help the team a lot. Um, but it's just on ice that it, it's just still, yeah, it's tilts. It gives you a head tilt a little bit and it's like, is it going to work? You don't, you don't spend, that's the problem is you don't spend 1.3 million of your cap and give them a three-year deal to be an off ice contributor. That's where I do struggle with the signing. Cause if yeah. that is what you ultimately were signing him for more so for what he's going to be able to do for your, you know, off ice and in the locker room. I'm sure there's plenty of other guys who Dave, you and I could have went in there and got that team raw, raw if we really wanted to. Like, I mean, I've seen, I, well, I've seen video of Mike doing it. <laughs> That's right. And what happened? We won the game, the uh, prospects tournament uh, a couple of years ago. That's right. We won the game. We beat Shane Wright and all those bums. I got them riled up, but no, like I, I, I just, that's the only thing. Like if this was more so for, you know, off ice, you don't give guys that term and that amount of money for that. That just seems like, you know, kind of bad cat management for a team that's so up against it as is. Yeah, I I'd agree with that. I mean, what's like, what would happen if he needed to go on waivers is he, he probably would make it through, but I would assume so. But would like, he be happy with that? He no, will not. He's no. going to be like Wayne Simmons. He ain't going to play in the AHL. He's going to, yeah. he'll stick around, but no way is he going to be uh, riding the bus in the AHL. I don't see that. Which is a weird situation that Wayne Simmons had this year, by the way, that no one really talked about that he was technically put on waivers, but then like just never reported and no one ever said anything just kept paying him he kept practicing with the team as if he was with them it was kind of a weird situation what went down with wayne simmons uh this past season um yeah i i'm i'm curious to like you know how things are gonna unfold on the on the blue line like there's still some expectation that there's going to be some sort of movement um on the blue line and, and they're gonna reshape it uh, it's been spoken at length about you know, the type of players that Brad Trilling likes to have back there. He's spoken about how they want to get longer and meaner and tougher to play against. If you look at the collection of guys who are back there right now, they don't really scream tough. So do you expect for there to be some more, you know, movement or additions to this blue line in, in some capacity? And really, how do you make that happen with the limited cat space that they have? They're already eight million over the cap. Yeah, like it's it's really difficult because it's also like who's out there, right? So like Zadorov, I mean, he was uh, he was in Calgary the other day. Apparently, did you guys see that MLSE plane that was in Calgary? Yeah, was Brad there? Was he was he you know having conversations with old Craig Conroy trying to figure out a trade? I I don't know. Potentially, I go ahead, David. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. He did say he wanted to add length to the defense and add that big body. I just don't know what Calgary's plan will be, right? Because I'm having a hard time understanding what direction Calgary's trying to go with so many of those players on expiring deals. They can't exactly take too many steps back because they still, they're like in that weird spot where they still want to compete. So, if they're going to trade as a door, they're going to want something back. Right. And I think he's making two and a half. You said two and a half million. So like got to the least have to figure out to don't you know, to match salary, which shouldn't be overly difficult, but yeah, I, I mean, is a door is the type of defenseman the Leafs would, would covet a lot because they don't really have that guy on the roster right now. Um, now do I, I'm, I don't know what that, who was on that plane and what, the business of that plane being there. Um, we, we definitely needed somebody at the Calgary airport to be on, on spy duty. I don't even know how that picture came about. I don't know. Jeffler was in Jeffler must've been in Calgary or something. <laughs> but so here's my, here's my thing. We talked about the log jam of the roster and stuff and, you know, defense being the one that needs the biggest upgrade, but we brought up Nick Robertson. And I, I feel like if we're going to have Nick on, here if we're gonna have you on we have to ask you about nick roberts because you probably watched him 
more than any of us the last few years. And obviously health has been the biggest issue that he's dealt with. But other than health, what exactly is keeping Nick Robertson from being that full time NHLer? I don't think there's anything else other than health. <laughs> Honestly, it, it kind of seems like it's, it, but it's it it's really difficult to figure him out. Like I've talked to him a few times, and he's it it, it just. I remember Haley Wickenheiser saying that he needs to really like he needs to tone it down a little bit. Like he's he plays really hard, and that's good. But sometimes he puts himself in bad positions, like the part where he got injured this past season where he hurt his shoulder. Like, did he really need to go that hard into the boards? I don't know. Like, for the puck, I mean, it was a tough hit, too. But I I think the only thing getting in front of Nick Robertson is Nick Robertson. Like, there's, there is, he, he's such a good player. Like he has a great shot. Um, I, I, he's grown so much. I remember watching him in his first year with the Marlies and he was always wanting the puck. He always, even if he was in a bad spot, he was beaver tail and his stick on the ice to get the puck. And as he's grown, as he's, you know, moved on and gained experience, he sort of picked his, picked his moments and he's uh, he's been able to understand and put himself in the right positions rather than just being in a bad position and just wanting the puck so i there there have been like areas of growth in his game it's just again he's getting in the way of himself at some points i think um like if 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 a gold medalist in women's hockey the one of the one of the goats of women's hockey is telling you that, Hey, it might be smart to like, just tone down your work. I I mean, wouldn't you think it would be smart to listen to that? I I don't know. Like I'm not an NHL player. I I'm not, I don't really have any knowledge of, you know, how to get there obviously, but yeah. You know what I think too, though, like when it comes to that, like deep down, he might also struggle with, Uh, The fact that everyone keeps saying, like, guys, a little undersized. Well, the only way you look at undersized guys who succeed in the NHL is those who typically are are really hard workers and do go into the corners and do kind of play a bigger style than they are. So it it seems like he's he's still young where he has to figure out that proper, you know, that proper equilibrium where, yes, he's small, but he still can play the game hard, just not cross the line. I think he's young too young i guess we're or inexperienced where he hasn't figured out you know where he can balance it out into the middle hopefully he does and once that happens you know he can churn out a, a, a long season finally get a full season under his belt and then we can fully evaluate him but you know he's getting to a point now he's what 21 22 i believe now um which isn't overly you know it's not old by any stretch there's still a couple of years for him to to figure things out but the allure of what Nick Robertson's prospect, you know, what he was, I suppose, or was supposed to be is starting to fade a little bit to the point where now it's kind of being talked about as, you know, him potentially being involved in, in trade rumors as a change of scenery type of player. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what, uh, what does happen there before we let you go, actually, Nick, I, I want to get your thoughts. Cause there was a report that came out, Um, yesterday about Austin Matthews and his contract situation where he reportedly is only willing to accept uh, a a deal between three to five years, will not be signing more than, than five years. Uh, What do you think those deals would look like? And I suppose, you know, we can throw William Nylander into this equation too, if you want, like what, what's like David, I have chatted about this over the course of the last few weeks. I'm curious to get your thoughts on what you think, you know, a proper value would be on both of those players for an extension. Well, for Matthews, I'll start. Uh, I, I, rem- I tweeted a week or so ago. Maybe it was a month ago now. I, I have a horrible memory. But I, I tweeted, like, why would Austin Matthews not want to make money? Like, he could sign a three-year deal right now, $15 million per year, 
it, it doesn't seem like he's going to make that at this point. I think it'll be just more than 12 million, but I said 15 million at the time uh, for three years. And then he makes that money and then he cashes in even more money in the next three years or however much he wants to sign after that. I, I think that, and that's Matthews side that that would be smart for him. And I know hockey is all about like, you know, taking money and, you know, putting some money aside so the team can win. Uh, but at the end of the day too, you got to get paid. And like, it, it, it's the same in like a job negotiation. If you're going in, you're going in with sky high, like um, what's the word you're going in with sky high wants and asks, and you know, you're not going to get that, but you're still going to ask it to, you know, level the playing field a little bit. So maybe 15 million is what he asks and maybe they get him down to 12 and a half, 13. Uh, I'm not too sure, but for Matthews, I think, I think a logical deal would be anything between 12, 13 million bucks. Maybe do you, do you go higher? I, I'm not too sure. I think it depends how much term he's willing to give. Like essentially yeah. you get an extra 500 K per year you're willing to go past three years, right? Like mm -hmm. three years, 13, four years, 13 and a half, five years, 14. Like that, that's what I think I would try and um, do it that way. Where it's like, if, if you want 14 mil, then you got to give us, you know, five years of service here for us to yeah. get that high. Yeah. And I, I think that would be good for him for William Nylander. I mean, he, to me, do, he deserves nine and a half million a year at, in some shape or form, I, I don't. I think anything over that is pushing it. But at the end of the day, he's a good player too, and like he's gonna want to make his money. I. It's so difficult because like you, when you're well, not a. Well, here's the thing with Nylander that I, I I think often gets lost a little bit in these conversations, and and like Nylander is is rather one dimensional for a player of his stature. Yeah, is that one dimension worth over nine million bucks? Like, I I just don't think that is the case for me. I, I don't see him being worth that much money. Is he a forty goal scorer? Is he a hell of a talent? Absolutely, but he's somewhat di one dimensional, and, and for that, I just can't really see where he makes you know Marner money or uh, that he makes you know ten ten and a half like what he's asking for like i've seen it online everyone's very split on the Nylander debate and for me it's like okay everyone puts out all these offensive numbers and metrics and and whatnot that are exceptional i think it's something like 96th percentile or 97th percentile and in, in offensive i think i saw on like one of the j fresh cards that he put out there but defensively he's like 14th percentile <laughs> like how can you justify giving somebody nine and a half million dollars if defensively his, his, his output is, you know, in the 14th percentile among all NHLers over three year average, I, I just don't know if the Maple Leafs and Brad Trilliving especially could, could stomach that. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, it's, that's, that's very true too. I, I, I do think though, like he was almost a point per game player this season. I, I, I think that has to, come into it a little bit like John Tavares is a point per game player. He but he is defensively strong. So, so you Timo, have that. So it's Timo Meyer. Timo Meyer had 40 goals. Timo Meyer took what was he 8.8, .8, I think. Yeah. It's it's tough. And it's tough that you know Nylander does Nylander not have the same agent that Johnny Goudreau had? Certainly does. Louis so, so it that's it's gonna be difficult. It's yeah it's it's gonna be tough but i guess i i don't i don't ever see them trading him though like it, it's very difficult to see maybe they do maybe that's how they get a defenseman yeah but but yeah i i i wouldn't hate going at nine and a half i think that's the wall no going yeah. past that and he wants more than that so it'll be interesting yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, Brad Tree Living made some pretty good moves this past week, but uh, it's not a complete roster yet, so we can't give him a full grade on the offseason until training camp rolls around. But so far, 
yeah, it's been pretty good. Once he gets Matthew signed under under uh, you know a, a deal with some term, I'm sure he'll get some bonus marks for that. But the real bonus marks would be if they can try and figure out something that works for both sides on on William Nylander, uh, in in my opinion. And again, he'll have all summer to figure that out. Uh, Nick, really appreciate you taking the time to to join us today. Uh, it's it's been a while. You, you were on the show before Dave started co-hosting with me. You came on the show a couple of times, I believe. Oh, yes. So it's nice to get you back on. Friend of the show, we can uh, we can officially call you. And uh, why don't you tell those watching and listening where they can find some of your work? Uh, so, yeah, the hockey news and Sports Illustrated. So for me, I'm at, you can type in on Google or your web browser or whatever, thn.com slash Toronto and my work and David Alters will come up if you or interested and in, i know you guys are on youtube and are killing it uh i'm also there so you type in nick bard and you'll find my stuff there and then on twitter and threads it's at nick barden anywhere else i, I don't think i have anything <laughs> if you Perfect. see him anywhere else it's not nick barden no it's, it's not. not the nick barden you're thinking of no it's an imposter people think i look like frederick anderson so it could be him i don't oh, see really? I, I don't see it I do you not know, see it. I mean, the hair color is a little different, though. Yeah, like, like if your hair about? was a little oranger, perhaps it's because it's like quaffed and you've got like a white, really white face. Yeah, I could kind of see it. A little young Freddie, uh, Freddie Anderson. I don't. Yeah, well, I will always say I will. I do not see it for the rest of my life. <laughs> I mean, you do wish you had Freddie's bank account because I do as well. <laughs> <laughs> that is true <laughs> all right appreciate it everyone go check out nick uh where uh wherever his his work is obviously uh, a solid young up-and-comer in uh, in the lease market that'll do it for us here today on the podcast I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show you can subscribe to the locked on lease podcast on all podcasts and platforms including up on youtube now as well you'll receive daily leafs content for myself on twitter at mickey underscore canuck Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti and also follow Nick at Nick Barden on uh, Twitter. Uh, leave a like and a comment down on YouTube if you enjoyed listening to us today. I will be back with another episode on Monday. Enjoy your weekends, everyone. Uh, thank you again to Nick for joining us. We'll chat again on Monday. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.